Hello, my name is Anna and I love trying vintage recipes. So today I'm trying three slow cooker recipes from 1975. Today's recipes come to us from Rival Crock-Pot Cooking and I'm hosting a giveaway for this very book. So if you'd like a chance to win a copy, you'll have to watch to the end to find out how to enter. Happy Crocktober, everybody. It is here. We are finally in the month of slow cooking. Slow cooking is an all year round thing. I know. <laughs> I even said it myself earlier this summer, but I definitely think that the colder months, fall, winter, they kind of go hand in hand with a slow cooker meal, a soup, a stew, something warm and something delicious. I've cooked from this book before. I actually made the male chauvinist chili from <laughs> for my Crocktober video last year, but I've chosen three all new recipes that I have never tried before, but maybe they're a favorite of yours. So I would like to hear about that if you have made any of them before. I'm kicking things off with this ham and noodle casserole. This one in particular was really exciting to me because it makes two servings. So I get to use my tiny little slow cooker. This one is two quarts. Cook noodles according to package directions until barely tender. So I had some wide egg noodles that I just cooked in some boiling salted water. I ended up cooking them for about four minutes and it says to drain and toss with just enough oil to coat. So I did drain these and then toss them in just a little bit of vegetable oil. So that's what we have. Add noodles and remaining ingredients to greased crock pot. So I'm just gonna coat that in a little bit of vegetable oil. I'm not using a liner this time on my small slow cooker because they're just a little bit too big for this one. So I have the noodles going in. This is one cup of cooked cubed ham. This recipe would be a really great way to use up leftover ham. I just purchased, you know, already cooked and cubed ham at the grocery store. I have eight ounces of whole kernel corn. This is canned corn. That's what they use in the recipe. I suppose you could also use frozen if you prefer. One can of condensed cream of chicken soup. I have this very skinny spatula that is perfect for scraping cans. <laughs> One tablespoon of chopped pimento. You know, I have really embraced pimento in my life. It's not something I cooked with very much before starting this channel, but I do enjoy the little bit of color that it brings to dishes. And it's in so many, <laughs> so many vintage recipes. Oops. Ooh, I spilled some. Half a cup of grated cheddar cheese and one fourth of a cup of chopped green pepper. Give that all a good stir, gently. And it says to cook on low for seven to nine hours. That cook time, even though it's on low, does seem a little excessive to me. Slow cookers nowadays especially cook at a little bit higher temperatures than they did back when this book was originally published. On top of that, every slow cooker is different. It varies from brand to brand. Every recipe is different. So basically you just kind of need to keep an eye on your slow cooker when you're trying a new recipe. With a lot of different appliances, you just kind of like, as you use that appliance, you get to know it, you get to know, you know, does this cook a little warmer to whatever. And as you get to know your favorite slow cooker recipes, you kind of learn that too. So although it says seven to nine hours, I am gonna cook it on low, but I'm probably gonna check on it. I just have a hunch <laughs> in this one. And Just a little bit of a closer look there. You can see all of the festive colors from the green pepper and that pimento. This smelled incredible while it was cooking. It has just about everything I would want in a casserole. Noodles and like a creamy sauce, ham. I think it's gonna be good. Let me make sure I get a little bit of everything though. Mm hmm that is very good. It has a lot of nice texture to it too. I mean, the noodles, of course, they soften quite a bit in the slow cooker. That's why you wanna cook them a little bit under what they would normally be cooked to until they're barely tender. So the noodles are very soft, but then you get like that chew from the corn and the ham and you get the green pepper. All Overall, it's just a really, really good experience. It doesn't need any additional seasoning at all. Of course, I'm aware, you know, that ham is gonna be very salty and the cream of chicken soup as well. Mm. It's very hot. <laughs> but yeah, I could see this being served with maybe like a salad or some vegetables on the side for a really complete meal. Next up, I'm making this burger and bean hot dish. I'm gonna be using my six quart slow cooker for this one and I do have a liner in it. So I'll go ahead and link the ones that I've been using in the description down below in case you're interested. In skillet, brown ground beef and drain well, which I did. This is one pound of ground beef. Combine all ingredients except cheese in crock pot. So 
This is my ground beef going in. I know this is a bit far away from the camera, but it has a short cord and my outlet is on like this side of my island. So I'm kind of doing what I need to do. And then I have one can of barbecue baked beans, 16 ounces, which I could not find. Uh, the smallest can of barbecue baked beans that I could find was 22 ounces. So I went ahead and just like measured it out and weighed it. Sometimes it's just not always easy for me to find the same sizes of things that were available, you know, back in the day. One can of condensed bean with bacon soup. Why is it that some soup cans have pull tabs and some you have to open with a can opener? Lately I've noticed that more because I use a lot more canned soup and I think it's so strange because I'm not finding that it matters what flavor of soup it is because I've had cream of mushroom soup with a pull tab and cream of mushroom soup that you open with a can opener. Same brand, Campbell's, good old Campbell's. I even know some people who work at Campbell's Soup. I suppose I could ask. <laughs> and that brings us to our spices. One eighth of a teaspoon of black pepper, one fourth of a teaspoon of chili powder, one half of a teaspoon of garlic salt, and one tablespoon of dried minced onion that I'm almost dumping on the counter. <laughs> you know what, we'll unplug it and bring it a little closer <laughs> so you can see a little bit of what's going on. I am gonna put the cover on that and it says cook on low setting for six to nine hours. I'm gonna go on the low end here. I'm gonna go low and then I can actually add the amount of time I want. We'll go six and after six hours, it will just automatically switch to keep warm. I love this slow cooker so much. So this one, I just have a little bit of shredded cheese on top. The other serving suggestion was to eat this over cornbread. I'm gonna try it as is because I don't happen to have any cornbread right now. And I do think that this could probably stand on its own without it, although probably delicious with it. It has kind of that like sweet barbecue scent to it. It's not like a spicy, it's, it's more barbecue than it is like a chili. Mm, that is so good. I think it has the perfect amount of seasoning in it, but you could definitely, if you like things a little spicier, you could add some cayenne to this maybe. But I really, really like that barbecue flavor to it. I think I mentioned I had a little bit of trouble finding those barbecue baked beans. I think it's worth looking for them and specifically seeking them out for this dish because I think it does add something to it. There's like bean with bacon soup in here. I do get a little bit of that smokiness from the bacon, I guess. Yeah, now that I really think about it. Something that's just a little bit different than your usual chili and cornbread, I think you should give this one a try. Next, I'm trying this layered enchilada casserole. So this recipe takes a few more steps than maybe your typical, you know, dump and go crock pot recipe, but I just have a feeling it's gonna be worth it. I'm gonna start by preparing the sauce. And for that, you need a can of tomatoes. It says 14 and a half ounces of whole tomatoes. I couldn't find whole tomatoes in this size. I used a dice. I think it's gonna be fine, everything's gonna be pureed. <laughs> Don't drain the tomatoes, you need that liquid. And then just a small amount of onion that has been cut up. Again, doesn't really matter how you cut it up because it's gonna be pureed. And then we've got some garlic that they say to mince, so I'm gonna put that through my press. Now it's time to blend. That looks pretty blended to me. So now it's time to move over to the stove. So this mixture from the blender goes into a saucepan. To that, I'm adding some chili and some salt and a can of tomato paste. So I'm gonna go ahead and whisk that together just to break up that tomato paste. And then I have to bring it to a boil. While I'm waiting on that to boil, I'm also gonna start browning a pound of ground beef. So between the meat and the sauce, yes, a little bit more work than your typical slow cooker recipe, probably. This is already starting to come to a boil. So I'm gonna turn the heat down on this and let it simmer for five to 10 minutes. All right, we're ready to assemble. I'm gonna be making this in my six quart slow cooker and I do have a liner inside. So we have white corn tortillas, our ground beef, the sauce, and then two cups of cheddar cheese. Place three tortillas in the bottom of the slow cooker. I had to buy so many tortillas. I think I'm gonna have to make some chilaquiles or something <laughs> because I need nine tortillas and the smallest amount I could buy was 30. So let's see how this works out. Three tortillas. 
I'm gonna kinda stagger them. Yeah, that covers the bottom pretty nicely. Let me see if I can show you. See what that looks like. And these aren't like super, you know, I'm not rolling them up. This is kind of a, kind of a loose interpretation of an enchilada. Layer on tortillas, one third of the ground beef. Would help if I had a spoon. Let's get, let's get us a spoon. Dividing it into a third, we'll see how this goes. I'll probably go a little more. I, I do worry that this is gonna be, I don't know, maybe under seasoned because you, there's no seasoning on the meat or anything. And you know, we just had some pretty basic seasonings in the sauce, but we'll see. Maybe this will come together to make something magical. One third of the tomato sauce. I have this great little ladle here that's extra long so I can get right in the bottom of the slow cooker. Uh, maybe a little more sauce, I don't know. One third of the cheese. So we're almost making like an enchilada lasagna in here. But I do like this combination of ingredients. I'm pretty, pretty excited for this one. That's probably pretty good. So that leaves us with the first layer all complete. So I'll go ahead and layer the rest of this up. So one final look inside the slow cooker, we cover. I'm gonna cook this on low and we'll see how it goes. Is it the most beautiful thing ever to come out of a slow cooker? No, <laughs> no, no, it's not. I didn't have super high expectations about the appearance of this and that's okay. Hopefully it tastes good, which matters more to me I will say for all of these recipes, I've had to shorten the cook time. You know, you really, if you're trying a new slow cooker recipe, you just have to keep an eye on it. And that's kind of how it is. I let this go for about four hours actually, because I think if I let it go longer than that, it was gonna burn <laughs> and I didn't want that. I am ready to give this a try and we'll see how it tastes. Let's make sure I get it all. I think really quick before I taste it, if I were to serve this, I would probably offer maybe some like cheese and maybe some other toppings to go with it if people would like that. Mmm, that is good. That is tastier than I thought it would be. I didn't think it would be bad, but I thought maybe it would need a little bit more seasoning. It definitely has no spice. So if you like something a little bit more zesty or spicy, you're gonna wanna add some like cayenne pepper or you could add some like spicy salsa on the side if you wanted to. But I think as is, I do like the flavor. The texture is pretty soft. Of course it's going to be, we baked corn tortillas <laughs> in a slow cooker with a bunch of other ingredients and everything kind of warmed up and steamed up and got soft. Honestly though, it is really tasty. I do like it. Because the corn tortillas got really soft, it almost reminds me of like a tamale or something, just a little bit. Like it's got that kind of texture and flavor to it. Even though I had a little bit more prep to do with this one, I think again, it was worth it. So let's talk about this giveaway. I'm giving away a copy of this very book, the one that I cooked from today, to one of my viewers. The giveaway will run from October 8th, 2023. So if you're watching this video, it's live now through 4.59 p.m. on October 15th. So that gives you pretty much almost exactly a week. And to enter, all you have to do is you need to subscribe to my channel. Secondly, you need to like this video or, you know, give it a thumbs up. And third, comment on this video, starting with happy Croctober, and then tell me about your favorite thing that you like to prepare in the slow cooker. You gotta put that happy Croctober in there because that's how I'm going to search and make sure that um, people actually wanna enter the giveaway. So very important to include happy Croctober in your comment. This giveaway is open to pretty much everyone. And just so you know, this is not a brand new book. Of course it's not. I have another copy that I found at Half Price Books, but it's in pretty good condition and very, very usable. <laughs> So best of luck if you wanna win a copy of this book. So I think, did I include everything? I hope so. Rival Crock-Pot Cooking, originally published in 1975. I feel like if you were gifted a slow cooker in like the 70s or 80s, there's a good chance that you're also gifted a copy of this book or maybe Crockery Cookery, one of the Crock-Pot cookbooks that I have featured on this channel before. I actually only, as, as much as I love slow cookers, I really only have, I think three, slow cooker cookbooks from the 70s. I have a few from the 90s. I don't even think I have any from the 80s. So, you know, I'm always looking for more, but I have just a few in my collection. This one is really good because it's got that spiral binding that I love so much. So 
It lays flat, it folds in half, <laughs> makes it really convenient. The first time I cooked from this book last October when I made the male chauvinist chili, I had a lot of comments on like, oh, you should try this recipe, you should try that recipe. I think a lot of people do have this book in their collections and a lot of them have found kind of like their favorites in here, but we do get treated to these really fun drawings sometimes. <laughs> and they do have a couple of the finished dishes on the front and on the back. Although the tomato soup is obscured by a barcode <laughs> on this copy. So, you know, this, this book has a lot of different chapters, beans, rice, and pasta. That's where my burger and bean hot dish came from. There's a poultry section. That's where your chicken and your turkey would be. Soup, sauces, of course. Like soups and sauces lend themselves really well to the slow cooker, I think. Anything that you want to simmer for a long period of time. Oh yes. So we have the crock pot specialties section right here. And this is where you find the really fun stuff. Fondue, hot refried bean dip, hot broccoli cheese dip. You know, your dips, your party food, like my favorite category of food is party food, of course. I currently own three slow cookers. So I have the six quart, the two quart that I used. And I guess like my third one is not technically, a, it, it is a slow cooker, but it's really just a warmer. It's a little dipper. I'll pop a photo of what that looks like. <laughs> But it came with my six quart slow cooker. There's no heat adjustment. It's really just to keep things warm. But that one is great for dips. Even if you just have a little bit of jarred queso or something and you pour it in there and let it warm up, it's very luxurious, I feel. <laughs> or it's also great if you have a meal and you've made gravy or something, it's really good to like hold that gravy and keep it warm too. I actually had more slow cookers before we moved out to California but I sold one of them. It was like a three section slow cooker, great for parties, but you know, it was just so big and so heavy and I, I had to let some things go. And then I think I had another like four or five quart slow cooker that I didn't use as much. You know, sometimes I think, do I need to add another one to my collection somewhere between the two quart and the six quart? Probably not, but maybe, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> People might think it's excessive to have that many, but they all do kind of serve their own purposes. I really love the two quart slow cooker for small amounts of food. It's great if you live in a small household like I do. And then the six quart is fantastic for things like potlucks, holidays, anything where you wanna make a quantity of food and kind of hold it at a nice warm temperature. This book touts more than 300, can you see? More than 300 recipes especially for the original crock pot slow cooker so that's a lot of recipes in a little in a little book like this as for the recipes that i chose today i thought all of them were really tasty truly <laughs> of course i choose things that I, I think i'm going to like honestly i'm trying to think of my favorite it might be the burger and bean hot dish i'm not sure they were all really good they were all my kind of my kind of stuff the ench layered enchilada bake it tasted really really good but I bet people would probably be like, I could use some more spice in this. If you like things a little bit spicier, I would say definitely add a little bit of cayenne to your sauce or maybe use some taco seasoning in your meat when you brown it, something like that. But it did have a good flavor. I would probably, you know, have it and then maybe have additional cheese, maybe some bottles of hot sauce, maybe some lettuce, sour cream. I think it would, it would kind of make it a little bit more special if you had those, those little extras to add to it. I don't really have too many critiques about any of them, honestly. I guess one critique, and I've mentioned this throughout the video, the cook times in here are very long, but this book was published in 1975. Slow cookers were a little bit different back then. And I think even today, if you're trying a new slow cooker recipe, like a modern slow cooker recipe from now, you still wanna keep an eye on it. Cook times are gonna vary. In my case, my dishes finish cooking faster than it said they would in this book. Just keep that in mind if you're gonna try any of the recipes in this book or any of the recipes that I made today. If you love cookbooks and recipes from the 1970s, I have an entire playlist and I will link it in the description down below. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I post videos about food, vintage cookbooks, and retro recipes every week. Thanks again, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.